This is a video companion for my crochet basket out of scrap yarn project. This is a class that I've taught at the Yakima Makerspace and I've made a little video to help my students just in case some of the steps get forgotten as soon as you get home. The first step is to choose a yarn or a set of yarns, three of them, a light, a medium, and a dark, with one of those being variegated. Variegated comes tone on tone. You could have multicolored, and you can also have uh, chromatic where it does slow shifts from color to color. I prefer the multicolored most, but there's ones with slight patterns. I like to have a variety of colors in my multicolor. Uh, this particular one is called Earthy. Uh, there's another one that I like that is called Reef. And if you're working on something that's very rainbow colored with a, a wide variety of colors, you might choose something that's more brilliantly colored so that you can use up all of those wraps. You can also make your own variegated yarn by winding your own ball where you splice in different colors. Now when I say scrap yarn, I mean little random balls of yarn. I like to make my own variegations sometimes because I will end up with bird's nests of odd colors and I can make them into my own variegated yarn and use them in these baskets. I'm gonna be using this tiny little ball a spool of yellow that I wound, wound myself out of some thrift store stuff, and another thrift store find of a multicolored uh, yarn used for making scarves. So I'm going to match up all of the ends so that they all feed together. Try to get out any knots before you start. Uh, if you have a whole rat's nest, try to figure out how to undo that first. When you're pulling from a new skein or a new yarn ball, always pull from the center out. You kind of dig around with your finger until you find the little belly button and you tease that out until you have the single piece of yarn. This helps your yarn ball not roll around because if you're pulling from the outside, the friction is going to make it uh, roll around and catch on other things. Alright, so you match up all three ends of your yarn. And this is what we're going to be working with. We're going to use a large hook and we're going to be making these multicolored baskets. These two purple baskets actually use the same variegation, but I used a darker set and a lighter set to make it. So the choices that you make for um, your yarns does make a difference. I like using a dark, a medium, and a light but sometimes uh, I'll find that I have yarns that are different weights. I have in my hands right here a dark that is a thick weight and a light that is a very thin weight. So what I'll do with a thin one is I'll actually double it up. I'll wind my own yarn ball on a yarn winder and feed it out of the center, but I'll have it feed at the same time so it's doubled up so that a very thin layer uh, can go with two medium or heavy heavier weight yarns. And I like to have the contrast so that I can make sure that I have all the strings of yarn together all at once. You're needing to splice together the ends of the yarn. You're going to need uh, to choose uh, what you're going to replace the run out little scrap yarn with. And here's a neat little trick. What you're going to do is you're going to take one strand and you're going to splice it to the other. We're going to use just an overhand knot. It's the simple pretzel knot. You wrap it around and then tuck the tail through and then pull it. And then you take the tails of the new yarn that you're splicing to, wrap it around, tuck in a little pretzel knot, overhand knot, and then you tug it and you slide those knots right up next to each other. You can pinch and slide or you can tug at both ends. And then you just snip off those tails and this is very tight. It's not going to undo even after you snip it. 
I'm going to show that to you again. Here's another one. I have uh, a yellow and an apricot, and I want to splice these together. One is my homemade variegated, and the other is just a yellow that I've been using. So, overhand knot, over and through. Tighten it down. I'm going to use really tiny tails on this one. And then again, over and through. And I recommend this way of splicing more than any other kind of knot because it is extremely secure and you can trim the little tails off so that the splice is virtually invisible in your final work. Tugs really nicely, doesn't come undone. One more time. Came to the end of that yellow. Now I'm splicing onto this green, over and under. Pull it tightly with that nice pretzel knot. And again, over and under. I'm leaving longer tails on this one so it's easier for you to see, but you could leave the tails on and if they're long enough, you can hide them in the stitches, but if they're short, they'll kind of stick out like little scrub brush. So I like to trim them when possible as close as I can to that tight little knot without accidentally cutting the knot. If you accidentally cut the knot, then you just have to redo it. Little trim right there. There we go. Now that's nice and secure. Okay, so I've chosen my three. I've got high contrast between my yarns. I like having high contrast. We're doing another knot, which is a slip knot. It's the same overhand knot, but instead of pulling the tail all the way through, we only pull it through partly. And that means that we can tug on all the strands of the tail and it will slip to be tighter. I'll show that to you again. If I tug on the tail of a slip knot, all of them at once, it'll tighten that loop. And that's what we want. This is for the magic circle, which is the beginning of this bag. For those of you who like diagrams, here's a diagram of the overhead knot pretzel knot and a diagram of the slip knot. All right. To hold the yarn in our hands, we weave it back and forth between our fingers. I like this sort of Vulcan live long and prosper hold on the yarn to keep my tension nice and loose, just over the pinky behind the ring finger, over the middle finger, and then back behind the index finger. I'm going to make sure that my loop is easily slidable and that the tails are out of my way. Now I'm going to grab my hook. We're using an N hook. That's a 10 millimeter hook. And the light, the farther on the alphabet you get, the larger the, the hook is in crochet. Okay, so we're going to stab a crochet hook through the middle of the circle. We're going to grab the thread that's over our index finger. We're going to pull it through the loop and we're going to go on the outside of the loop grab and then pull through what was on our hook. We're going to do that again. We're going to stab in through the loop, grab what's on our index finger, then grab what's next to our index finger and pull all the way through. And that would be our first stitch. But look, I messed up. I didn't go through my magic circle perfectly. So I'm just going to undo my stitches. It's very easy to undo stuff without losing everything in crochet. I'm going to start over pinky ring, middle finger over the index finger. Make sure I've got all three parts of my loop together this time. Make sure that my slip knot is smoothly sliding. I almost lost that green thread again. Okay, here we go. Step through the loop, grab what's next to the pointer finger, pull it through. Grab what's next to the pointer finger again and pull through what's on the shaft of your hook. Stab in the middle, grab on the outside, grab again and pull through 
those two. That's the first stitch. Stab through the middle, grab over the hook, grab what's next to the index finger from the outside of the loop, and pull through. That's our second stitch. We're going to do this eight times. Grab from the inside, grab from the outside, pull through two. This is our third stitch. Stab through, grab, grab, pull through two. Stab, grab, pull through two. Stab, grab, pull through two. Stab, grab, pull through two. Now we're wanting to do this eight times. And it's going to happen that you're so focused on stabbing and hooking and pulling through that you're going to lose count. But if you do, you can look for these little V-shaped parts. That's a stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's our eight. And now, I'm going to set this down, lay it nice and flat, no twists. And I'm going to grab the tails and I'm going to tug on that slip knot and it's going to sloop, pull everything into a tight little donut. There we go. That's the magic circle. I like this at the center of things. This is eight stitches all the way around. I even use it now for granny squares. This granny square doesn't have a magic circle, but I now use the magic circle for anything that I have doing a radial pattern. All right, pinky, ring, middle, index. Now, we're getting the tails out of the way again. We need to go and join up the end of our circle. So, underneath that very first stitch, we're gonna pinch the donut with our middle finger and a thumb, and we're gonna go underneath that first stitch right there. Hook, and then leave it nice and loose on your hook so that you can slide through. If you don't leave it loose enough, you won't be able to do it. That's stitch one. Stab in again to the very same spot. This is gonna be our second stitch in the very same spot. Now we're gonna move over the next stitch from our original eight. We're going to stab in, grab once, grab, pull through. That's one stitch. Stab, pull through, grab again. That's two stitches in the same spot. We're going to do that to every single one of these original eights. We're going to end up with 16 stitches with two stitches for every single hole there at the top. Stab, pull, hook, pull. Stab to the same spot, pull, hook, pull. Move to the next stitch. Stab, hook, pull through two. Same spot, stab, hook, pull through two. S look again, stab, pull. Stab to the same spot, pull. Am I even on camera? There we go. If I tighten down too much, I won't be able to do this. So you need to keep your stitches loose. If your hands are cramping up, you're doing it too tightly. Big hooks and big fluffy yarns need you to relax, not tighten things down. Continuing to go around until we've got our second row all the way around. Okay, that's our first row, and then around for our second row, and now we're going to go around for a third row. Now this one, we're going to change things up a little bit. Right here where this V is, that's where we had two stitches, so we're going to do that again. One stab, stab in the same spot, hook again, and then with two in that one, the next one is only going to have one stitch in that next hole. At the next V, we're going to put two stitches in, and it's going to alternate one and two. So that's one stitch, move on to the next one, put two in the same spot, right in that V. And then it's one stitch next, 
and then where the two stitches were, we're going to put two in the same spot. One and two. Now, if you've worked with granny squares, you understand that this is an expansion stitch. Every time that you're putting two in the exact same spot, that's what would have been a corner on a granny square, but we've got eight stitches and eight sides. So we're actually building out something that looks more circular, but is actually an octagon. And I will draw a diagram and also write down a pattern. There was a stitch that got a little bit tight from the previous row, but I managed to get my hook in there. And hook through. All right, hook, pull, hook, pull through two. Hook, pull through. where I had to do double in one spot. There we go. Two in the same spot. That's the nice thing about crochet is you can undo stuff without losing everything. You just lose a little bit of time. That's all. the fourth row. So I've got it going on to the fourth row. Now at each of those V's I'm going to put two in those octagon corners. Missed a spot. There we go. And then it's going to be two single stitches two in the corner, two singles, two in the corner, two singles, all the way around to the eight sides. So if you're trying to find the spot, because the further out you get, the harder it gets. So to find the beginning of this row, I like to use one of these alligator clips. You can use a bread twisty tie and just put it in the center of that first V of the fourth row, where you've got two stitches starting it. You can use a bread clippy clip, one of those little plastic ones. The traditional way is to grab a contrasting piece of yarn, shove the loop through between the stitches, and then tuck the tails through the loop of that, and then that's a little flag for you to see. Again, I prefer the alligator clip because it's easy to remove, and uh, I won't accidentally have a, a little eyelash sticking out. But as you get further and further out, it's going to be harder and harder to see where that next row starts. Like when you get about this big, we want to go about eight rows out and then finish with a ninth row. Here's the diagram of what this looks like. So we're working with an octagon, which makes a circular sort of shape stop sign and it has eight axis those are the corners of our octagon so this diagram shows us our different rows we got row one row two three four five row six seven and row eight. Okay. So in that magic circle, row one had one stitch, one, 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 eight stitches around. So one stitch per side. Then at each of the intersections of those stitches, we put two stitches in and they made a sort of a V shape right there between each of those single stitches. And 
If you look at it, it means that there's one stitch on one side of the corner and one stitch on the other side of the corner, which means there's two stitches for row two. So two, 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 two in each of those corners. All right, now we go down to row three and we've got two stitches in that corner and then we put one. So two and one, two and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, and then we go to row four and we put two there and then we put two single stitches. Now if you look at this, row one has one stitch, two has two, three has two plus one is three, four has two plus one plus one which is four, and that goes all the way around, then it's two, one, 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 which equals five, two, one, 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 which is six, two plus four is six, two, one, 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 two plus five ones, and then it's two plus six ones to make our eighth row. So, if I were writing this up as a pattern, I've got row one with one stitch eight times. Row two is two stitches together eight times. Row three is two stitches together and one next to it eight times. And that eight times is just going to continue for the rest of the pattern. Row four has two in the same spot and then two ones. Row five has two stitches together and three single stitches after that. Row six, two stitches in the same spot and then four single stitches. Row seven has two together and five single stitches. Row eight has two and six single stitches. Oh, I forgot the one there. There we go. So, row eight is two together and six beyond that because it will total eight stitches. In row nine, we're not going to do any expansion stitches. It's just going to be singles all the way around. It's going to be about eight single stitches all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And that's going to be the end of our expansion. We're not going to be expanding anymore because then we're going to start building the sides of our basket. If you wanted to make this into a giant rug or something like that, you would just continue the expansion out so that you had uh, two stitches at each of these corners. And it would just keep expanding out. So you can take a quick little pause, copy that down if you want. All right. So here we are with our octagon. This has the nine rows. The ninth row isn't expanded, and that's why it's kind of starting to curl up. I now need to decide which side I like the look of better, the back side or what I have as the front side. I happen to like the look of the sort of V or heart shapes. Other people like the sort of knotted look that uh, the reverse side of crochet has. Um, I just prefer one over the other. It's all on your choice. Now what we're going to do is to kind of help with going vertically. As soon as I'm there in the corner, instead of going in between, I'm going to go around the shank. So I'm going to actually kind of weave my hook in there, grab very tight so I need to kind of help finesse my hook through there and then pull through two and 
I go in around the shank, pull, pull through two. In and out, around the shank, pull, pull through two. In and out, around the shank, grab, pull through two. Do you have to do this? No, but I like the sort of rim that it gives the bottom and it kind of helps the sides immediately start going upwards. Otherwise, you can have sort of a bulging bottom to your bag. That's not a bad thing, uh, but this makes it more of a basket rather than just a bag. Stab, pull, pull through two. Stab around the shank, pull, pull through two. Stab around the shank, grab, pull, pull through two. And you're just going to repeat this. This is the exact same stitch where you're grabbing and pulling through two. And I'm off camera again. Okay. Around the shank. Now, you could probably do the multiplication, but it's going to be a lot of stitches going all the way around. And that's why I like the ninth row to be just single stitches, so I'm not having to go around the shanks of some of those doubles. But this continues on, on all of the sides. Here we come to where I have a little bit of a splice, and I'm almost to the end of this rim at the bottom of my basket. Now again, you can skip this step if you want to and just continue with the single stitches. No two in the same spot anymore. That's just fine, but I really like the look of this edge. So, I've gone all the way out, all the way around, and now that I've met up with the bottom of my rim, I'm going to go back to right underneath that initial stitch. So instead of going at the shank, which would continue to curl this inwards and make it more of a, you know, rimmed plate, uh, I'm going to go up vertically. So I need to do just a regular standard stitch just underneath the top part of that. Well, I got one more shank to do. One more shank, and then I can do a regular stitch. If your stitches are too tight, this is going to be very hard to do. You need to relax. If you tighten things down, it's just going to make it harder on you. So you want to leave it kind of loose on your hook. Okay, now we go back to right underneath the top of the stitch, just like we did before when we were making the base. And then somebody says, well, how many times do I need to go around? Well, uh, I'll put my bread clip on this part soon. But we're going to continue going around three, four, five, all the way up, at least as tall as it is wide. So if we've got a radius of eight rows, uh, we need to go up 16. That's eight and eight. So you're going to go up eight and another eight so that's 16 rows up yeah it's gonna take some time but we're gonna just keep spiraling all the way up I'm putting my little clip on so that I know when I've gotten back to the beginning again bread ties also work we just go spiraling around and around building up our basket 
Okay, I finished my first row. Now that I've gone around once, I like to kind of keep count. Sometimes you'll have it perfectly mathematically come out, sometimes you'll have added or lost a stitch. So I like to, at some point, count the stitches. So I'll put my bread clip on, a little alligator clip on, and then I'll count around to see how many stitches. I believe this bag has 60 stitches, which is not directly divisible by eight, but uh, that's just the way this one came up. So here's a different uh, one that I had started. This is the one that I started that magic circle with. And I'll show you the back side. At some point you're gonna get tired of having this tail hanging out from the magic circle. And you might wanna snip it off, don't do that. Don't do that, that would be very bad because then it could back out and then you'd have it raveling from the center. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna weave it back and forth around that center circle, kind of like uh, a spiral. And I use my crochet hook, you could uh, thread each piece of yarn into one of those large eyed plastic needles and stitch it through the center of some of these stitches so it's completely hidden but I find that just weaving it back and forth back and forth is good enough um, here I'll get it more on camera so that you can see I just do the whole shank thing but I pull the whole tail through until I've gone all the way around and used up all of the art. Sometimes if my tails are short, it'll just go around the center. Sometimes my tails are a bit longer. And I have to move on to row two. I like hiding all of my tails on the inside of my baskets. Um, some people don't like any tails at all. I don't mind having a few little whiskers poking out, but if you really really find them obnoxious, you can either stitch them in with one of those large-eyed sewing needles, or once you've woven them for quite a bit, you can uh, trim them off. Just one more, and I think this one will be hidden up. I'm just going to put it on the back side of this stitch. To hold it down. There we go. That's good enough for me. Spiraling it around and on the right side you can barely tell where it is. You, If you know what you're looking for you can see it but otherwise most people are not going to notice it. Plus this is the bottom of a basket. Most people aren't going to be looking at the bottom of a basket. Now, when I started on this particular basket, I began with a homemade variegated yarn, a store-bought variegated yarn, and a yellow. Uh, and uh, when I had made that variegated, I didn't actually trim off all of the splices. I left the tails on. Uh, so I now need to hide a tail. If you end up having to hide a tail, there's a way of doing it. It's called floating the threads. So you're going to lay that thread on top of the other stitch. Just let me get it in frame. And you're just going to stitch around it. Just keeping it laid on top of those other stitches. And that's one way of hiding the thread is just keeping it there underneath your stitches. And that's another way of hiding the tails, is just floating them inside. You could have done that at the center with the tails from the magic circle, but you don't really have to. Um, you can just weave those in. When you're using a variegated, you'll notice that the sides are going to have thinner stripes of color than the base does. That's just because the thread that's colored extends further when it's in the center and then as it goes up the sides you get thinner and thinner bands of color. Time has passed and I've managed to do eight rows. Every fourth row I've added in a different uh, band of a slightly darker color as a more of a visual cue so that you can see where I'm at. And this is only halfway there. We need to keep going a bit further. 
Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So one more set of four, and I'll be ready to do my handles. Okay, time has passed in the blink of an eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, we are ready for our handle. So I've been keeping my little bread clip right at where my row starts. And what I'm gonna do is a chain stitch. So instead of stabbing it in to that stitch, I'm gonna just grab and pull through. That's one. I'm gonna do this eight times. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now I'm going to count the stitches down below. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on the ninth one, that's where I'm going to reattach this chain. I know it looks flimsy right now, but don't worry. So we're going to continue going around and we're going to beefy this up by going over the top with more stitches. So I continue to stitch around. Pretty sure I was off camera for some of that. Probably still off camera. It's a little bit hard as soon as this project gets bigger for me to keep it in screen and also do this at any sort of speed, but I'm trying to do that. And this being uh, 60 stitches round uh, at about 30 stitches is the halfway mark. So we already used up eight. I'm just kind of counting around until I get to the 30th stitch. So eight plus the 22. I know, it's a math thing, but we're almost there. And then I'll show you the chain stitch a second time. This is what it's really like when you're not flashing through time at the blink of a video cut. All right. We're just about there. Chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count out the eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on number nine is where I'm going to reattach it. There we go. That's nicely on camera. Now we're just going to continue around and then I'll show you when we finally get around to the handle again how to make that nice and thick and stable with the handle. This is where you should listen to an audiobook or play some music while you're doing your crafts. Because it takes time. Stab, grab, grab, pull through two. Stab, grab, grab, pull through two. Finally getting back over to our handle, which means what we have to do is we have to split the stitch. So we're going to go in through the upper half of that stitch, grab, pull through two, and again stab through half, pull through two, stab through half, pull 
through to This is a little bit finicky, so go ahead and use your thumb and middle finger to kind of smush the stitch so it's easier to find the right spot to stab. And there's going to be eight stitches. So, if you check out this handle in a second, you'll see that it's gotten thicker just with that one row. Now, I like to have more than just one row. I like to beefy it up by three or four. So, here we go on the other side just to show you that again with a nice close up. Regular stitch, the last one, and then we take that chain stitch and we go to the little heart shaped stitch and split it in half. And stab at that spot and grab through. Split the stitch, stab, grab, pull through two. Split the stitch, grab, grab again, pull through two. Split the stitch, stab, grab, grab again, pull through two. Split the stitch, grab, grab, and pull through two. Split the stitch, grab, pull, grab, and pull through two. Split the stitch, grab, grab, and pull through two. Split the stitch, grab. more time, split the stitch, grab, grab, pull through two. Now we're back to the base, so we go through both parts of the stitch. And there we go. And we continue this around. And now we don't need to worry about splitting any stitches. We're not going at the shank of any stitches. It's just the regular thing. Three or maybe four more times up there. I think this bag will be good with three for making a nice cushy handle. So here I am on the second row around on a handle. And it's just regular stitches here on out. camera with my hand. I think you can see the red blinking light on the camera reflecting off of the work. But you're just doing a regular stitch. So I've got those handles made, and they're about three wide. I will stop, uh, and then what I'll do is those tails that are hanging out there, I've snipped off my yarn balls, I've got these tails hanging out, so I'm going to hook and weave them back through, similar to what I did at the very beginning with the tails from the Magic Circle. I'm going to weave them back and forth until they're all tucked in. And that's the project of the crochet basket out of scrap yarn. I encourage you to use up all of those unidentified balls of yarn, all of those weirdo colors. In fact, specifically use colors you don't like. 
because having the variegated, having one color you like, one color you don't like, and then a variegated that maybe has something similar to both of those together, it will actually make it all blend and you can use up some of those scraps that have just been sitting around waiting for you. Enjoy. I have been trying to start up a Patreon, but uh, if the link below doesn't work for you, uh, go ahead and subscribe and like and do all those things that make social media awesome. I've got a few other videos up, none of them craft related yet, but more crafts will be coming. Thank you so much. <laughs>